Whether they're actually responsible or not is, is very, very hard to demonstrate, but I think there's certainly a, a, a lot of importance in terms of the effects of these games. Grand Theft Auto 5, the highest selling video game in history. But is violence in the game becoming more influential on children than ever before? Or are video games like GTA simply a scapegoat for society when it all goes wrong? We asked a group of students from Blackburn College just how influential is Grand Theft Auto. Well, firstly, I don't think it influences people at a young age because for me, games are about escaping reality and I can separate the both from real life and the game. My opinion is that it's an 18 for a reason, kids shouldn't play it, it's too violent for most children. I think that is the parents who have the bigger influence than the game, because they're the ones who buy the game, and if they don't buy it for the kids, the kids can't be violent. I think they're amazing, and uh, I don't actually think they influence kids at a young age at all, really, because I play them. When I play a game, I want to play something that I just cannot do in real life. So like in GTA, for example, in real life, I'm never just going to walk up to a car and just steal it. But in GTA, it just that's why it's so fun, because you can do stuff like that and shoot people. But are video games to blame? Or is it violent TV shows and movies that we all watch? Why are video games the ones to be vindicated? Is it because you're the one playing the character? Or because people are more relaxed about the age ratings of video games? We asked Richard Hanlon, a psychology teacher at Blackman College, what he thought on the matter. Yeah, that's a good question. I think probably that's the case. There's something really, I suppose, definite about a film and a record. If you see the explicit content sticker on a record, uh, it is a bit of a frightener in terms of the fact that you're, it's a passive experience is listening to music, you're not kind of involved. So you tend to take it a little bit more seriously. And I also think that people in general are more used to the idea of certificates with films. So yeah, I think they're more rigidly observed. More than they do with games. Because when you like plan something with your mates and you say a film, you say, oh, we can't go to that turn 18. But when you think of the game out, you don't even think about the rating, rating. until you get to the shop and you say, oh, do you have ID? Then, then you realise that it's an 18 in packet. Uh, I think one of the, the key things here is the age certificate on game seems to be, it, 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 people tend to take it less and less seriously as time goes on and so younger and younger kids tend to play uh, things like Grand Theft Auto. I don't think uh, kids should play GTA as as how it's rated an 18. What's the bigger influence, video games or television shows? Well I think um, if we're looking at the year 2013, uh, video games are obviously increasing in importance where young people are concerned. I think generationally, if you go back over the last 50 years, people have always had television, children have been brought up with it. In the last kind of decade, 15 years, there's certainly been a bit of a sea change in the fact that parents are prepared to give children a little bit more time and space to kind of explore these areas on their own. And I think nowadays, kids are more anxious to get on the computer and, and play their games rather than watch television. Although Grand Theft Auto, or GTA, is one of the most controversial games in history, allowing you to play with guns, have drugs, sex with prostitutes, go on murderous rampages, beat people to death with your own two hands, it also allows you to race with friends, do missions, and have hours of endless fun with each other. And isn't that what it's all about?